everyone. Welcome back to Self-Published Success, a show that highlights forward-thinking authors who chose self-publishing over traditional and found success in doing so. My name is John Feldman, founder and CEO of Visionary Literary, and your host for today's show. Our guest today is Amanda Karch. Amanda is a Babson College alum, owning her entrepreneurship skills through her journey as a poet and author. She has self-published a poetry collection titled Her Favorite Color Was Sunshine Yellow, selling almost 200 copies in its first print year. Her debut nonfiction book, Poetic Potential, Sparking Change and Empowerment Through Poetry, was released in December of 2021 through New Degree Press, and it is her hope to spread the power of poetry and of female voices to the world. Amanda has also been published in Padler Press and Topical Poetry, and is forthcoming in an anthology with Currencia Press. Amanda, welcome to the show. Hi, thank you so much for having me. Good, we're happy to have you. Um, A couple things that I'm really excited to touch on. Uh, We'll get into those questions soon, but first tell us a little bit about yourself, um, what got you into writing, and and got you into poetry. All right, well, to start, I think it's important to talk about how poetry and writing has really always been a big part of my life. I've been writing since I was a little kid, uh, definitely more on the fiction novel kind of path. I was always into world building and creating all of these stories. And although I never actually finished one that I wrote, which is (laughs) kind of funny to think about, um, writing was something that I've definitely always loved but I didn't actually go to school for it. I went to a business school for my degree. And I think that it's really helped me throughout the whole self-publishing process for sure. But yeah, I've, I've been writing since I was little. And again, it was fiction at first, but somewhere around high school, I started writing poetry and I wrote that pretty consistently for a few years. And then once I went to college, you know, all of a sudden I just didn't really have time anymore. So it kind of fell off and it was very sporadic when I was writing, but then the pandemic hit and I had more time than I ever knew what to do with. And it had always been my goal to publish a book. And I didn't even know that self-publishing was an option out there until I think I stumbled upon it on a blog somewhere and was like, oh, this is actually something that I could use and I have the time to do something with it right now. And then it, then everything just started and it kind of didn't stop from there. Good. Well, glad to hear. So what was it that I guess that made you switch from um, to get into poetry and what makes you like poetry and not go back to fiction? So... I don't really know when the switch happened fully. I know that I had been writing, I had been working on this one book idea of mine for, I worked on it for a few years and it was probably the biggest project that I've ever undertaken. I probably had like 60 typed word document pages, which was a lot for someone who has never actually finished something that they started writing. Um, But somewhere around high school, I think that's where I started exploring a little more into poetry and although I don't really know per se why I started I know that it's really been a big benefit for me in my life and it's had had um, a lot of advantages and has helped me in a lot of different ways Um, but I think in terms of why I definitely, I definitely do like poetry more than fiction. I will admit it. And I, but I'm not counting out a fiction book. I think that that could be somewhere in my future, but that would just be a whole, whole lot of unlearning and relearning different things that I haven't actually touched in a very long time. But I think that poetry just has so much potential and so much power. I mean, I've talked to so many different people about how poetry has helped heal them or people even say that it saved their lives and I understand that I mean it's really a great healing tool and can help you work through so much in your life anything from just a simply a stressful day or to something as big as mental illness or trauma or even chronic illness as well like I know that it can help people through that and I think that just 
seeing how much it's helped me really discover my confidence and find my voice. I mean, I would never be able to do this podcast a few years ago until I started writing poetry more consistently again. But I think that there's just so much power in it. And that's why I really love it. That's good. Well, I'm glad. I know writing can be very therapeutic in several ways. Um, mm -hmm. Poetry was, uh, it was never my thing. I was always awful at it. Um, not to say I'm great <laughs> at, at fiction or creative nonfiction, but they always just kind of drew me because you can sort of, um, I guess you can build in some fluff inside mm -hmm. longer works, whereas poetry, you can't really get away with that. So, um, yeah, yeah. I, I definitely will. Yeah, I definitely love how in poetry there's so much uh, there's so much meaning built in everything. I think it's a really fun process to go through and make sure like, every single word or uh, like line structure or however you set up the formatting of a poem, how everything can mean something. And that's something I've really started experimenting in the past year or so. But I think it's really it's like so fascinating to me. Yeah. Yeah, well, you're right. Every single word in poetry counts. So, um, and I'm, I'm glad that you, so you figured out, obviously your passion is in poetry, right? And you've also figured out a way to get that poetry out into the world, right? So you've mm -hmm. chosen, um, you stumbled upon self-publishing, right? Yeah. Um, yep. What, I guess in, since the time that you've stumbled upon it, right? And you have released your works to the world, what are some, I guess, of the advantages that you've found? Like, have you done more research and found what the traditional publishing process could have been like? Or have you really just owned in on the self-publishing journey? And like, what are, the, what are the benefits that you have found in controlling this process yourself? Yeah, so I think there are definitely a lot of benefits to self-publishing. One thing that I really loved about it was the complete creative control over the entire process. I'm also a very type A person, so I like to be organized and have things go kind of like my way and very planned out. And so I think that part of my personality was really good for self-publishing because it allowed me to stay on track and actually get everything done that I needed to. But really, this collection of poetry was very personal to me. It's a collection of love poems, which really just have a big piece of my heart woven into every single, every single poem. And so it was also my first work that I was really putting into the world. I have been terrified of sharing my writing for basically my entire life. I mean, up until two years ago when I self-published, I could count on one hand the amount of people who I'd ever let see my writing. I was really private about it and was really scared about being judged by my writing. And so this process of like putting it out into the world slowly was definitely really personal. And so I was really happy that I was able to have all of the control over the different elements and figure out what needed to go where and really have all of the editing and revision control and really make it the piece of work that I wanted it to be. So I think that that was definitely the biggest, the biggest advantage for me, just because of the nature of the themes that I was writing about. Yeah. And that's a really good point. Going back to what we mentioned a few minutes ago too, with poetry is that every single word counts, right? So if mm -hmm. you don't have editorial control, um, that can be, again, I don't know how an editor would really you know, edit a poem. Like I'm assuming mm -hmm. they wouldn't be able to do too much, but if they did yeah. again, every single word counts. And mm -hmm. for somebody you're so passionate about your poetry and your writing and each word that is put into those poems, I couldn't, um, I couldn't see that really going over well if an editor <laughs> sent you back a, uh, a document with a whole bunch of red on it for your poem. <laughs> Yeah, I, I know that revision and poetry are two things that are supposed to go really well together. Like you're supposed to be able to look at your work over and over again and be able to make changes. And I'm trying to get better about it, but there are still some things that I'm really fixated on and I don't want to change them. So I'm really happy that I was able to make it what I wanted. Yeah, yeah, big time on creative control. Um, good, so 
uh, there are listeners listening right now that are thinking, wow, I have poetry too. John and this show, all they ever talk about is nonfiction and fiction. <laughs> How I want to get my poetry out there into the world, right? So what would your suggestion be to that listener? So there are definitely a lot of different ways that you can get your poetry into the world. I mean, I discovered this great community on Instagram. There's a whole, there's this huge community of poets on Instagram where I really learned about self-publishing through the process because there are so many people who have self-published their own poetry books and have had a lot of success with it. And there are a few different resources that I could recommend off the top of my head. I mean, I know one of my friends on Instagram, her name's Watney. She has this whole company around helping poets publish and self-publish their work and gives a lot of different like workbooks and class type things to help you figure out the different stages to marketing and building your collection and writing poetry in general, really everything in between the stage of writing and publishing. So she is a really great resource and there are just so many people who would be super willing to talk to anybody about self-publishing poetry. I mean, I'm one of them. My DMs on Instagram are always open and I'm always giving advice to different people about how they can go about self-publishing or even even like my new adventure into trying to get traditionally published a little more, I am always open to giving advice because I think it's really important to take pride in the work that you've done. And if that means publishing it and put it out, putting it out into the world, then I respect that so much. Agreed. Yeah, it's definitely tough to get your, your writing out into the world. So when it comes to that, right, one of the things that, I think you mentioned like putting your work out into the world slowly was beneficial to you rather than, I guess, dumping everything at once. Is that a strategy for poets, right? Is that a strategy that you recommend and like how, I guess, yeah, is that a strategy or is there one now, like in hindsight that you would prefer? So I started sharing my poetry on social media at first. So it was kind of me dipping my toes into the water of putting my work in the world because again, nobody had really seen it up to that point. So I started sharing it with people that I didn't know that I slowly kind of invited my friends to follow it and then brought in that to my family and then just kind of everybody. And I think that it really helped me build my confidence in my work because obviously I loved the things that I was writing, but I was really scared of what other people were going to think. Yeah. And so putting just a couple pieces out at a time on the internet really just helped me build my confidence when people were commenting things like, oh, I feel the same way, or, oh, this is a beautiful poem, or just anything. Like It was really helpful seeing that positive feedback. And it made me feel a lot more confident once I had my full manuscript together and I was ready to self-publish. Good. Good. So one thing that you just mentioned too is like when now that you're you're obviously writing more and you're um, kind of dipping your toes into the traditional process, right? So again, mostly on this show, all we ever talk about is like fiction, nonfiction, full length stuff, the benefits, you know, the pros and cons of self over traditional. So when it comes to poetry, right, poetry collections, like what what are you finding? are the benefits of going the traditional route um, with publishing your poetry? So I think that the traditional route is definitely really good in terms of building your credibility in the literary and poetry world. I mean, I know a lot of people who have had great success with self-publishing and I'm really happy with what I've done with it as well. I mean, I want to change that for the world, but I know that there are a lot of people in the literary community, specifically those who are going to study it in school or trying to get fellowships or getting residencies, doing awards, contests, like a lot of those things, people, they don't look down on self-publishing because that's not right, but they definitely weigh the traditional publishing a little higher. So I've 
that's kind of my next step in trying to get published in literary journals or uh, magazines just to try to broaden my reach just to say that, okay, like I can have success in one area and I can try it in another. So really just broadening everything that I'm trying to do with my writing. Okay, good. So, and for, for the, the poets and aspiring poets listening, right? This is a, a bit out in, in left field here, but when you, so you've been, again, you found your passion here. You love it. This is what you, you love to do. For anyone who might be struggling, right? Maybe maybe they're a fiction or a nonfiction writer first, or maybe they're they haven't written anything and they want to write and they find that they love to read poetry, but they don't know where to start when it comes to writing poetry. What is your advice for that person? I think my biggest piece of advice is don't judge yourself when you're writing. I some of my best writing has come from 10 minutes of free writing, literally letting anything that is on my head, that is in my head, go onto the page, not thinking that, oh, this doesn't make any sense. There's no grammar, punctuation, like these thoughts don't connect together, literally just letting everything come onto the page. And then from there, you usually see like these little threads of things you can work with. And I think that one of the big advantages of poetry is that there really aren't any rules. If you're writing free verse poetry, there are no forms you have to follow. You don't have to do anything in any sort of way. You can really write however you want to. And I think that that's one of the most beneficial parts of poetry is just the freedom that's involved in it. And I think that it's what helps you really use it as a healing tool or a tool for empowerment. Really, it can be used for so many different things. And I think that really letting yourself go and having the freedom to say whatever you want, whatever's in your head, even if you don't fully understand where it's coming from, poetry can kind of be used to get to the bottom of that and figure out where you're going with it. That's excellent advice. Thank you. So Amanda, what is, what's next for you, for your writing, for your career? Oh, what's next? I, I'm, I'm about to start, uh, my life in corporate America, but I'm also trying to focus on my writing as well at the same time. So I'm hoping to really get a good practice of like 30 minutes a day is good writing and trying to get a lot more submissions into literary journals. And I have a couple other book ideas up my sleeve. Um, don't really know which way I'm going to lean because I could go nonfiction. I could go poetry. I could go self-publishing. I could go independent presses which are my new fascination but there are a lot there are a lot of different ways that i can go and obviously i don't have time to do everything all at once but i don't know i'm excited to see where it goes and i am really happy that i've rediscovered writing in the past few years because it's been a great passion to find again good i'm glad i'm glad it's it's nice to hear too that you have not only poetry ideas but you're talking about you know fiction nonfiction, going different publishing paths. Um, so it's certainly something that will be in your future. And, you know, I wish you all the best of success and luck. Um, where can listeners find more about you and your writing and, and where can they follow along with you in your journey? Yeah, so I am mainly on Instagram and Twitter. So at AKK writing, and my website will also have all the rest of the links that you could ever need like links to my books my etsy shop where i sell sign books and other little things um so that's www.akkwriting.com um and yeah i'm trying to be more active on social media now that life is getting busy again so i'm trying to find time for it but it's where it all started so need a return to the roots <laughs> good yeah that's always difficult to do but hopefully for the listeners and for you um, you can get connected on there and you can find more time um, mm -hmm. you know, to be on there. But don't cut into your writing time because you need that. Of course not. No, never. <laughs> Excellent. Well, Amanda, this has been um, fantastic. Thank you for all of the advice on poetry that we had not yet um, gotten into. Very much appreciated. Uh, we appreciate your time and again, wish you all the best of luck. Thank you so much. And thank you for having me again.